All right, time for another math easy solution. To discuss uh, basically a general proof of the Hopital's rule. I showed earlier what it was, and also I did a proof on the Cauchy's mean value theorem, which will be used in this. So basically, uh, let's just get a re recap what the Hopital's rule uh, states. Well, the first condition for the Hopital's rule is if you have function f of x and g of x, and they're both differentiable, well, near a, except possibly at a, and also uh, g of x is not equal to zero near a, and once again except at a, it could equal at a. And now suppose that you have basically either one of these cases, you either have case one or case two, where basically limit of f of x equals zero as x approaches a, or limit of g, you know, and limit of uh, g of x approaches zero as x approaches a, or uh, they both approach uh, plus or minus infinity. So what I mean by this, if you divide them both out, you can have a zero over zero, or basically plus or minus infinity over plus or minus infinity. Then, and then basically what the hobby tell states is, is limit as x approaches a of f of x divided by g of x is just equal to limit as x approaches a of f prime of x divided by g of x. And that's basically if limit on this one uh, basically exists or is plus or minus infinity. Otherwise you might have to do a second derivative. But uh, basically what it's saying is the limit of a uh, function divided by another function, if, it, if it's uh, going to be a 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, then it's just going to be equal to uh, the, uh, the limit of the derivatives of them each. Now to uh, prove this, uh, well first there's a, let's do a special case proof. This one is a fairly easy to do. So this special case, if you basically have f of a and g of a equals 0, and basically the derivatives are both continuous and g of a uh, is not equal to 0, uh, basically, uh, this one uh, as opposed to the limit of these two, because we have uh, the limit approach zero. But if they actually do equal zero and it's continuous, then you could simply just do uh, f prove it like this. So basically, the limit uh, is the uh, derivative of uh, f, f divided by derivative of x as x approaches a. This just well, you could just write it as uh, this just equals two f prime of a, because that's uh, they actually are continuous. So you can actually put them in there, and g. And then uh, using uh, basically the definition derivative, but an alternative version, basically we'll just have it on both sides, x to the a of limit of, this one would be x minus f of a divided by x of a. This is just a derivative, basically alternative version instead of, as opposed to the regular one, basically it's an alternative uh, version of definition because uh, de the definition derivative is just basically the, the limit as the rise over one becomes a minimum, basically. So we have this is this is all it is f of x minus of a is rise divided by x minus a, basically as it approaches zero or that it, it's tangent to a point. You can see my video on definition derivative, but uh, basically then if I for both of these, so then the derivative of g of a this also just equals to similar as above g of x minus g of a using this alternative definition x minus a. Then if you uh, divide these out, this this just cancels, x and a cancels. So we're just gonna be left with uh, this right here equals to limit x approaches a of f of x minus f of a divided by g of x minus g of a. And then we know that it's just so the special case of f of a and g of a both equal to zero, they just cancel out. So we're just gonna be left with limit x approaches a of f of x, g of x. And uh, there you go, you can see it from here. And here we have basically the Le Hapitel's rule proof. And basically yeah, there's our uh, proof of this. But now let's look at a general proof right here. So now the general proof is basically for when you have the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals zero. Well, let's do it for uh, where it equals zero here and limit yeah, and basically, uh, limit g of x equals uh, zero as x approaches a. So now to prove this, uh, yeah, we're not assuming that they both equal zero at x or f of a even exists there. So now uh, to prove this, well, we have to define a couple functions here. Yeah, basically, the first function we're going to define is uh, capital F of x equals basically f x when x is not a and equals zero when x is a. I'll show you why I'm doing this. And also similarly, uh, g of x. Yeah, and there you go. Uh, g of x basically we're defined as equals g of x when x cannot equal a and uh, zero when x equals a. And according to this definition, uh, we have uh, f 
f of x is continuous because uh, basically the uh, f yeah, because f of x is continuous on everything say on all real numbers except uh, at x equals a and since f of x is continuous everywhere except x equals a but then in f of x it is continuous at x equals a because it's zero there so it is continuous also because uh, we have that limit as x approaches a of f of x x um, basically just equals to limit as x approaches a of f of x because that's put it in here put it in here and uh, this one would just equal to zero this one is what we uh, we know from our first uh, condition we stated and this just equals to f of a thus is continuous uh, you can see my I'm gonna do a video later on continuity I should have done it earlier but yeah basically this is continuous because it's uh, the limit exists everywhere so the limit as a, a limit of f of x exists on all the points so you won't have any breaks in the equation and uh, basically similarly you're gonna have uh, g of x is the same thing here g of x is also continuous everywhere or if you're uh, used to uh, used to this notation, uh, basically it's continuous on, uh, basically you could write it this as x is element of all real numbers or i this is all real numbers. Now if we uh, just basically let x element of all real numbers and x is greater than a here, then basically, yeah, then basically f and g are continuous on the interval a to, the, a to x and this is a closed interval meaning at a and x it also uh, the values exist or are continuous and it's also uh, then this will also be differentiable on in the interval <coughs> a and x this is a uh, open <coughs> interval meaning basically uh, like, like I said before uh, this one is it doesn't have to exist here so it's, it doesn't have to be differentiable at a and x and another thing we know is that g prime of x is not equal to zero near near x equals a, but at a it is actually equal to zero. And you can see that from above here, uh, basically what we stated before, which we stated, yeah, g of x is not equal to zero. And that's for that one. Basically, this is because uh, this is because. Yeah, a g of uh, x, a small g of x, is not equal to zero, and this one is basically equal to g of x. At x is not equal to a, so uh, near it, it's not going to be uh, it's equal to zero. Thus, by the uh, Cauchy's theorem, uh, we will have a number. Yeah, by Cauchy's mean value theorem, which I showed proof uh, in my earlier video. Basically, we we have so we, there will be a number. Uh, let's call that C, where C is in between uh, the interval. So basically, uh, it's it's greater than it's greater than a and less than x. So we have a number C such that we have uh, f prime of C, kappa of prime of C divided by g prime of C is just equal to f of C minus. I mean, uh, yeah, f of x, the interval, the endpoint minus f of a, all divided by capital G of x minus G of a. Yeah, so now this is a uh, Cauchy's theorem, but then we know that f prime of a and g prime of a both equal to zero here, because that's what by our definition. So this will just be equal to f of x over g of x. And I just wrote it down here by our definition. They both equal to zero here. So that's so now if we let let's say uh, let x approach a from the right side. This is what we write a plus up here. This just means if you have uh, a here and x here. If you're approaching it from the right side of a, you would have it as uh, this is a plus here. And, but if you were approaching it from let's say this side here, then you would just write uh, x approaching. A negative so the, the left side is negative and right side is positive here so basically if we let this happens then we will get uh, basically C approaches a positive because C is less than it so we have C here and this is also approaching and we know that C is less than X and greater than a so it's always in between these numbers and so that's according to Cauchy's theorem and then this one will get closer to it as well so then we'll have this as well and then so basically we have this and then if we write down limit as x approaches a from the right side or positive we're gonna have of f of x divided by g of x this one just equals to limit 
as x approaches positive a of capital F of x over g of x. So remember, that capital F of x and g of x, they both equal these uh, when x is not equal to a. And now we know from uh, this above, f of x uh, yeah, divided by g of x is equal to f prime of c divided by g prime of c. And uh, this one is the same thing as writing c going to a. So then we could just write this as limit of c going to a plus of f prime of c divided by g prime of c. And once again, this is the capital one. Since it's not equal to a, we could just write it in the small term. So this would just equal to of c going to a plus of this one is f prime of c divided by g prime of c. And this one is just a, all we're doing is just a different variable. And then if you just change this to x, we're just going to have it to limit as x approaches a, yeah, a, a positive. This would just equal to, well, this is just change a variable, fx divided by g prime of x. So then we have this. We have uh, Cauchy's theorem, but this is for approaching from the right side. So we have basically a limit, I mean, not Cauchy's theorem, the happy tells rule. Yeah, so basically they equal each other, the limit of uh, fx divided by g of x equals the limit of their derivatives. And this is the hoppy tells rule. Now this one is for approaching from the right side, as we let basically x the element of all real numbers, and uh, this one is x is uh, greater than a here. But now if we let, if we, yeah, if we do the similar thing, but for the other side, where basically x the element of all real numbers, uh, and x is uh, less than a, then we're going to have x is, um, yeah, I mean, we're going to have the, the exact same conditions as, as above, which apply to Cauchy's theorem, except now we're going to have uh, the interval of x is less than c is less than a, where we're going to have now f prime of uh, c is equal to g prime of c. And basically, f prime of a minus uh, f prime of x divided by this. And this one, once again, is equal to 0, these two both, both of these ones. And we're just going to be left to well, be negative, and they cancel out f of x and g of x here. So this will be the, the same thing now as before, except now uh, we're going to be approaching a from the other side. So we're going to have x negative approaching, I mean x approaching a to the negative side. And then we'll get uh, will be the same thing as c approaching a from the negative side, because we have right here, we have this is a, we're going to have x here. It's approaching a, and this is c as well. Once we take the limit, then we're going to get exact same thing as above limit of basically f prime of x. We're going to have a limit of, of this divided by, yeah, so we'll have a, a limit of the f of x divided by g of x equals derivative uh, of, of the limit, the limits of the derivatives. And this is from the left side. So thus we have it for both sides. We're going to just going to get the general one for uh, basically where a is finite in this case. I'll, I'll show you what I mean, basically. Yeah, so there's our general one right here. Uh, from left or right, it's gonna be the same thing here. But this is where, but this is this the above is all for when a is finite. When we have finite is a, it's not infinity. So bas basically, but now let's say when, for the case when a is equal to infinity, or basically I just write it like this, write an infinity sign here. But what we could do is basically let, um, let's say let t is equal to x. I mean, uh, one divided by x. So then, when x approaches a or infinity here, then we just get yeah. You know, when x approaches infinity, then we then then uh, t is just going to be approaching zero. T is approaching uh, zero, but this is from the positive side here because this is positive here. But it doesn't really matter which side you do it. So then we're going to have limit as x approaches uh, infinity of f of x divided by g of x equals limit as t approaches uh, 0 from the right side here of f of 1 over t divided by g of 1 over t. Then we could just apply the, uh, the rule we had above for when uh, a is finite. So then all we do here is apply yeah, for when a is equal to finite, which, I, which we just proved above. So basically, all we do is take the derivative here and then using chain rule. So we're just going to get uh, right over here equals to limit 
t approaches zero because it's, because it's fine out here. We just change the variable now, so we're gonna get uh, this one here f prime of one over t, and then times by well the derivative of one over t using chain rule is just uh, negative one over t squared, and then similarly divide this out as well, g prime one over t, and then the, the derivative of the inside as well using chain rules this as well. And then these two uh, cancels right here, so we're just going to be left with t uh, limit t approaches zero from the positive side because uh, infinity was positive there. Of f of one over t g prime of one over t. And now we just change variables. Change the variables. So we're just going to be left with uh, equals to limit of basically x approaches infinity. Yeah, of uh, f of x divided by g of x. So then there's our proof right here. I mean, uh, for the derivative sign here, and this, yeah, this basically equals to limit x approaches infinity of f of x divided by g of x, and that's our proof for when a is infinite right here. And of this one, now just uh, another note is that the above pr uh, above proofs were for uh, when the case of zero zero. This is what we had for above, but if we have uh, infinity or infinity, this is actually the same thing as uh, 0 and 0, so we'll just write that down. Okay, now the above cases I, I derived was for the case of of like having a, something like 0 over 0, but uh, this in fact, if we were to do it, uh, like the above actually works for uh, infinity over infinity because these are very similar. What I mean by this is, uh, well ba basically they're both uh, indeterminate. And they're basically just a, a way of writing, uh, basically indeterminate. You could write both of them, or basically mean the same thing, kind of. So if you had something like limit of x to the a of uh, f x divided by g of x, where if this was the zero over zero case, they both go to zero. You could just rewrite this as uh, limit as x approaches a of well one over g of x over 1 over fx. All, all I'm doing is rearranging this. This actually means, this means the same thing. And this is a case of infinity over infinity. And then, uh, yeah, so you could still use the law tells rule. So this is uh, very similar. And uh, in this case, uh, so the law tells rules works for all of them. Yeah, so uh, the proofs above works for both cases. Well, uh, it's all for it. it's a pretty long proof, but hopefully you get your uh, mind around. But this is uh, because it's very important to know the Hoppy tells rule. It's really easy to apply. Just uh, the proof of it is pretty hard, but once you get a hang of it, it's uh, it's pretty uh, important to know. Well, it's uh, all for today. Hopefully you learned, and um, you can download these uh, notes uh, and uh, in on the info below in the Dropbox link. It's pretty useful to have these. And that's uh, all for today. Hopefully you learned, and uh, stay tuned for another math 